Hi, my name is Dr. Raheem Karmali. Welcome to Lowry Endodontics. One of the questions I commonly get is what is an endodontist and what does an endodontist do? An endodontist is a dental specialist. It's a, a dentist that goes back to a, a specialty training program. It's usually two to three years to learn about the ins and outs of, of what causes the pain and the infection from the inside of the tooth. And as an endodontist, that's what we manage most of the time. And the procedure we do the most is root canal treatment. Now in the general public, root canal treatment is kind of a scary uh, procedure, thought of, of as being painful and very difficult to get through. I'm here to assure you that done properly, done carefully, endodontic treatment is pain-free, not a flinch. The way we manage the disease inside of the tooth is through root canal treatment, and that's where we clean and disinfect the inside of the, of the root canal system. I think the best way for me to share with you what we do is to actually show you a case that I completed yesterday. We'll go through the, the process of what we're looking for and what it is, the root canal treatment, and how we manage it, and then what the end result is. So I want to share with you a, a case that I treated yesterday. Uh, this patient's name is Stephanie, and Stephanie had some severe pain isolated to this tooth. And she was experiencing some pretty extreme temperature sensitivity. Every time she ate or drank something hot or cold, she had an excruciating pain in this tooth. It was pretty uncomfortable for her. Zero to 10 on the pain scale, she rated it around eight out of 10, which is pretty significant. And the reason she was having the pain is that the pulp inside of the tooth was inflamed. This pulp has the blood supply, immune system, and nerves. And this pulp runs in canals that go up the center of the tooth. Stephanie had a deep cavity in her tooth, and that cavity went really close to the nerve. And she recently had this filling placed by her general dentist, who did a fantastic job. But the cavity, and therefore the filling, went really close to the nerve, and it was just too much for that nerve to handle, and so it got inflamed. And a lot of times it's typical for a pulp that's inflamed to be very, very temperature sensitive. This pulp is dying. Now once the pulp dies, it'll stop hurting, but it loses its immune function, and bacteria will find a way to get in here. And the bacteria ends up leaking out the tip of the root into the surrounding jawbone, and an abscess forms or an infection in the jawbone. Fortunately for Stephanie, we're catching this early and this hasn't happened yet. So right now, we're, in Stephanie's case, we're mainly dealing with inflammation and not infection. So with root canal treatment, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that it is absolutely painless, not a flinch. We're gonna anesthetize Stephanie really, really well. And we're gonna do it carefully so even the anesthesia is painless. And then we're going to isolate the tooth with a dental dam. And the dental dam is a, a shield that protects the tooth. So as we're disinfecting it, saliva isn't contaminating the, the, the tooth and the canals. Additionally, our disinfectants taste pretty awful, and we don't want you to taste it. So we'll isolate the tooth after she's numb, and then we're going to make a very small opening into the top of the tooth. Throughout this procedure, we're going to use a dental operating microscope. The microscope allows us to make this small tooth big, and so we can work through really tiny openings and preserve as much strength in the tooth as we can. We're gonna locate all the canals. Now looking at a two-dimensional radiograph, it's very difficult to determine uh, what the anatomy of the tooth looks like. Every tooth is a little bit different. Most of my practice, a lot of my practice, is redoing root canals that weren't done as well as they could have. And the number one reason they're not done very well is that um, bacteria or a canal is left untreated. This is a 3D scan of, this, of the same tooth that Stephanie has. This is Stephanie's tooth. And if we turn the tooth sideways, we can see that there's not one canal, but there's actually two canals. Okay? There's a, a thin floor of bone between the tip of the root and the sinus. And we want to be very careful during treatment for that. Okay? So we know what the anatomy of this tooth is before we, we jump into treatment. And so we'll make the small access opening into the tooth. We'll locate the canals. There are two of them in there. We're going to carefully remove this pulp tissue, and we're going to disinfect it. 
Now during treatment, I use a powerful laser to help my irrigants and disinfectants thoroughly clean out that canal system. We don't want to leave any, any tissue behind to set up an infection later, okay? It's more important to do things carefully than it is to do them quickly. Once we have this cleaned out, we're going to make a determination. If things were really inflamed in here, I'll often put some medication in and a temporary filling. And we'll let that medication work with Stephanie over the next couple to few weeks, and then we'll bring her back for a second visit. If things look really good at the first visit and, and perfect, then I'm just going to seal it up right away and not put any medicine in there. And we'll put a, a tight seal in there. We'll use a, a very biocompatible ceramic sealer and, some, and a rubber-based material called gutta percha to seal this up. Now, Stephanie's tooth is, is already weakened because it had a big cavity in it, now a big filling. And so we're going to reinforce this tooth with a glass fiber post to stiffen the tooth up, to strengthen it, to make it less likely to break off. And then we'll seal up the access. In Stephanie's case, this tooth is going to require a crown by her general dentist when we're all done. But not all teeth that have root canal treatments need a new crown. Okay, So that's the process. So I want to next just show you what it looks like clinically. This is Stephanie's tooth. This blue is the dental dam, which isolates the tooth and prevents saliva from getting into the tooth. We're going to make a very small access opening into the tooth. Under the microscope, this is how big the tooth actually looks. And so we're able to make accesses that are, that are very, very small, very, very conservative. And we have two canals in here. Here's one of the canals that we saw, and here's the other. That's one of the canals looking into the opening. And that's the other. And again, this is that tooth looking at it from the side. Now, in Stephanie's case, uh, with the use of the laser, we were able to, to thoroughly disinfect everything inside and remove all that inflamed pulp tissue. And so we sealed it up. And this is the root canal filling material. And then this is uh, before I bonded the ceramic post and then closed up the access. There's the access closure right there. In a lot of these situations, with just a little extra care, you can virtually make these access openings completely disappear. This is the final result on uh, Stephanie's case. We have a nice dense fill all the way to the tip of the root. We've got some extra branching in the canals that we were able to capture. This is the post that we placed in there, and then we have the access all sealed up. This process was absolutely pain-free for Stephanie. She was very nervous when she first came in, but after we got her numb and not hurt her doing that, she gained a lot of confidence. She was in significant pain before we started. I called her this morning and she's 100%. She didn't even need Advil this morning. And that's typically what we see in a lot of these cases. Well, I hope this answered some of your questions about what an endodontist is and what an endodontist does and hopefully also allayed maybe some potential fears about a root canal treatment and, and fear of the unknown. Thank you for visiting us at Lowry Endodontics. And again, my name is Dr. Raheem Karmali.